Hi everybody, and welcome to Take a Jill Pill on YouTube. Duh, you know you're on YouTube. Today I thought I would break away a little bit from a typical Take a Jill Pill video because I had a request to show you guys how I do my makeup. I just wanted to start out by saying that the makeup I do for YouTube videos is way different than the makeup I do day to day. My daily makeup is very simple, fast, straightforward, and there's not a whole lot of it. But when I'm on camera, I have to make sure that I lay it on a little thicker than normal just so that I'm not completely washed out. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how I do my makeup for YouTube videos. My eye makeup, specifically. The whole point in doing your makeup differently when you're filming videos is so that you're not washed out and to make sure that you look nice and awake, not tired at all. Basically, you want to look like you have a ton of energy, even when you don't. Nobody wants a tired, sad YouTuber. Well, I'm sure there's a market for that. But this is a happy channel. This is the first makeup tutorial I've ever filmed and it's tough please don't feel like you have to go out and buy products that are exactly like mine. Use what you have because the real point of this video is to show you techniques to make sure that you look awake and not washed out. I hope you enjoy it. On to the video. Okay, so I have already done my left eye and I'm going to do my right eye now and try to get it to match the left eye. We'll see how that goes. I am right-handed so I always start with my left eye because my right eye is easier for me. So however the eyeliner on the left eye turns out, it's a lot easier for me to match the eyeliner doing the right eye because the right eye is easier for me, if that makes sense. I don't know if that even makes sense. Here we go, I'm going to show you how I make sure I look awake and fresh for YouTube videos. As I mentioned, I will be showing you the products that I use just for reference, but use whatever you have, use whatever colors you're comfortable with using. Don't worry about it, use whatever you have. I'm going to start with a brush. This is by Luxie. It has a, can you see that, a fluffy end, and then the other end is like kind of a flat, tapered brush. You can obviously use two different brushes here, but I like this one because it's a two-in-one, and I do not like using brushes when I don't have to. So even my skin makeup, I put that on with my fingers. I also have the Physician's Formula Butter Palette in uh, Sultry Nights. So I'll be using that palette today. First, I'm going to take the Coconut Kiss, which is right here. And I'm gonna take it on my flat, the flat end of my brush here. So I'm gonna take some of that. I'm gonna put it all over my lid and up to the underneath, I'm not flipping you off, I'm sorry, up <laughs> to the underneath of my brow bone. So not just the lid, but also like up into the crease as well. This is a beautiful shimmery color. It's very um, skin tone color if you're pale like me. I'm also gonna take it to the inner corner. It is much brighter and shinier than I would typically use for a highlight color, but this is for film, so everything has to be more dramatic than we would normally do it. I know a lot of makeup YouTubers do their highlight shade first, um, like their brow bone and things like that, but I do it backwards a little bit for filming YouTube and I will explain that later. So next I'm going to do this shade right here and it is called um, Beach Beige. Here we go. I'm gonna take, again, just the flat side. I also like to, for the most part, go um, light to dark with my brushes so that I don't have to keep changing a different brush, changing to a different brush. I'm going to take that um, beach beige color and put it here. So kind of the outer side of my eye, but not down onto the lid. It's gonna be kind of on, like, the crease slash brow bone. Make sure we're getting into the crease a little, but not onto the lid and not up to the eyebrow, like that. And then I'm gonna take the darkest brown shade in the palette right here, 
called Off the Coast. And I'm gonna take that same flat brush, don't need to wash it or wipe it off in between because we're going from light to dark. I'm going to kind of go in the same area that I was just in, but not as large of a section. More like this. Like that. Just dabbing the color on there. We're not blending or anything yet. After dabbing that scary dark shade, it probably doesn't look dark on camera because it's not supposed to, but in real life, it looks pretty scary. I'm going to do my eyeliner next. Now I like liquid eyeliner. I used to be very intimidated by it, but I love it now. It's all I use. I use the um, Physicians Formula and it's their Eye Booster Serum, whatever liquid eyeliner pen um, in the color Deep Brown. I prefer to wear browns versus black because I feel like black just looks really harsh on me. Now, that being said, I could probably get away with black um, while filming because again, you're supposed to be more dramatic while filming. So I could probably get away with black, but I don't have any black mascara, so, or black anything really. So I just don't use black. I use the dark browns that I have. Now this is kind of what I was referring to earlier when I said that I do my left eye first because it's easier for me to match the eyeliner on my right eye. I do a little bit of a winged eye, um, nothing crazy. I do this every day, just for my everyday makeup, but for, again, filming, I want a little heavier, a um, little thicker, a little longer, so I do my left eye first, and then I try and get my right eye to match my left eye. <laughs> if I did it the other way around, it would make my life a lot more difficult. So whatever I end up with on my left eye, I match on my right eye. My favorite thing about this pen is just the tip. It's like a very thin paintbrush. It's very flexible and very wet, and it's very easy to use. What I like to do, again, matching the eye I've already done, I go to the right eye, and instead of going out like this and then going up into a wing or a tip, I feel like this already has a very great sharp point on it. So I'm gonna take advantage of that, and I actually go backwards, so I place the pen where I want it to land, touch it and pull it in. And the tip of the marker or this liner pen here gives me that nice sharp point that I want. So I don't have to try and make it myself. And that is the basis for it. Now I'm just gonna trace along my upper lash line, touching it to my lashes, like right, right along the upper lash line. And there you have it. Now you may be wondering why I applied the eyeshadow but haven't blended it. And then I did the eyeliner before blending my eyeshadow because that is kind of backwards, but I'm gonna explain why. Darkness creates depth. And when you're filming, the camera likes that depth. It looks good on camera. Having the dark eyeshadow there creates a shadow and in doing so brings your eye up and makes it look more awake. Now the reason I haven't blended it yet is because you don't want the darkness to go too far down because that will drag your eyes down. Wherever the darkness is, is where your eyes will go. So if it's up and out, your eyes will look more up and out or lifted. If they're down, it will drag your eyes down. So I do the eyeliner next to make sure that I don't accidentally blend the dark below my eyeliner. I also like a winged eyeliner because it creates lift in the eye and lift in the eye is what makes us look awake. Now that I have the dark colors on my eyelid, I'm going to take my highlight shade. It is this one here called Baycation. Kind of cute. I'm going to put that on my fluffy, the fluffy end of my brush and I'm going to start right underneath my eyebrow and blend down into the dark and blend it all together. When I'm filming, I don't, I don't blend my makeup as much as I would day to day because the camera likes stark contrast. So rather than completely blending it, I blur it, if that makes sense. You do want it a little bit blended, but not completely blended to where it kind of melts into your skin tone and looks natural because 
that won't look good on camera. You want more of a contrast. So I'm gonna start under the brow bone and blend down into the dark area with that light highlight color. Okay, there we go. And I did forget to curl my eyelashes before I did eyeliner. I always do that before eyeliner so that I don't accidentally take off my eyeliner. So I'm going to curl my eyelashes right now. I always make sure I have every lash in there. There's no lashes sticking down. I give it a quick few pumps. Call it good. This is tough. I have so much more respect for makeup YouTubers now. Not that I didn't have respect for them before, but it's definitely heightened respect now. Next, I'm going to use a white eyeliner. I'm going to be using the Maybelline New York Lasting Gel Drama, whatever, whatever, in color Cashmere White. Sounds fancy. I'm only going to do my bottom waterline and then up into my upper line and the corner just a little bit. And this is again to make us look more awake, more refreshed. This makes the whites of our eyes look larger. Not that I need it, I have kind of crazy eyes anyway, but <laughs> it helps you to look more awake because it creates the illusion that your eyes are open wider. And really that's what this is all about, to make our eyes look open and awake. So go along. Now this product is not like my favorite. Like I said, I'm just recommending it to you because, it, or I'm not recommending it to you. This is just what I have. I bought it kind of on a whim, but I'm not gonna go buy a new version of something I already have if this is doing the trick. So, so this one's fine. See, I would never do this in day-to-day -day life. I feel like I look like a little bit of a clown. But again, it looks good on camera. Next, it is time for my favorite part, which is mascara. Now, this mascara, I do 100% recommend. This is my absolute favorite mascara. I've been through several tubes of it now and have not bought any mascara in between. This is my favorite mascara. Um, it's a little difficult to find, unfortunately, but I buy it on um, grovecollaborative.com. I buy a lot of stuff on that website and I just really love it because I am trying to go more toward natural, eco-friendly makeup, but the product has to be good or I won't even use it. So this one is amazing. It is the Burt's Bees Nourishing Mascara and it's amazing. And I use it in the color black brown because again, I try to avoid black, but you can definitely use black. I've even heard of people using black on the top and brown on the bottom. So whatever your preference is. Even though for filming, we do need our makeup to be a little bit heavier and a little more dramatic, you still want to look like yourself. So use the products you already have and the products that you already like. Just be a little more heavy handed with them. I just apply the mascara like anybody else. I mean, root to tip, wiggling slightly here and there. I like to play with the tips, make sure that I fully coat every lash and it's hard for me to talk while applying mascara because like most women, I hold my mouth open while I apply mascara and I can't help it. So I'm just gonna stop talking and get this done. Now this next part is going to be personal preference. I know a lot of women that don't do anything with their bottom lashes. Even women who get false lashes or lash extensions, they don't do anything to the bottom ones. And they have a point because like I said earlier, when you have the darkness on top, it makes your eyes look more open. So you want lightness on the bottom and darkness on the top because that gives you a more awake look. But I don't like to just ignore my bottom lashes. I think I look washed out if I don't do something with my bottom lashes. Now I don't do eyeliner down here or eyeshadow or anything like that, but I do like to put mascara on my bottom lashes. So I will be doing that. Okay. 
They do have some crazy long bottom lashes. I used to trim them because the lady in my makeup class told me I should trim my bottom lashes because they were too long, and so I did it for years. And then I got lazy, and one of my friends one time said, oh, you have really long bottom lashes. And I felt so embarrassed because I had neglected to trim them. So I said, I know, I know, I need to trim them. And she said, why would you trim them? That's insane. So a few months ago on Instagram, I did a poll and asked my followers <laughs> if I should trim my bottom lashes. And they all said, absolutely not, that's insane. So I don't trim them anymore. Go follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I'd love to be friends. All right, last but certainly not least, we're going to do the eyebrows. Now I lost the genetic eyebrow lottery. <laughs> my eyebrows are thin and wispy and uneven and too short and they, I just, I have the worst eyebrows. But I found a product that I also buy on Grove Collaborative that I love that has helped me a lot. It's definitely upped my eyebrow game. And that product is the PYT QAT Beauty Brow Pencil and sp Spoolie. <laughs> In the mirror, that P was a Q. So Spoolie, one it has a Spoolie and the other end um, is a very like smooth sort of crayon that I absolutely love. So step one, brush up the eyebrows. I always brush my eyebrows straight up because that reveals any sparse areas that are there that day because it seems like the sparse areas change every single day because I have the worst eyebrows ever. So I brush them straight up. That way I can see what gaps I need to focus on that day. Okay, so I'm going to take the eyebrow pencil. It's also like retractable, which is really nice. Pull it up just slightly. And I always start on the bottom edge of my eyebrow and kind of trace in the general shape that I want it to go. Kind of gives myself a boundary that I'm not gonna go below. And again, my eyebrows are too short, so I always do a little bit of a extra little wing on the end to give them a little, little bit more length. Then I go back and do short upward strokes. Fill in weird sparse areas. Now this area is particularly sparse because I had my eyebrows microbladed last year and I don't know, this part was really dark and then this part disappeared. So I don't think I'll be doing that again. And I kind of go to the right and then I also kind of do a little bit of a top border. I don't do it nearly as sharp or as harsh as I do the bottom border but I do kind of want a top border so that I know I'm not gonna go above a certain area. Kind of go backwards. Make sure I've got it all filled in. And I am being a little more heavy handed than I would with my day-to-day -day makeup simply because this is for filming YouTube videos. back to my spoolie, brush up, I kind of go over the top and lay it down, make sure everything's laying down within that border that I drew earlier. And there you have it. It's fast, easy, really, really love this PYT Beauty brow pencil. And nothing in this video is sponsored, by the way. I should have started out with that. And that is how I do my eye makeup for YouTube. Now I do make sure that my skin is as even as possible, I've concealed any dark circles. I wear a little bit darker lipstick than I normally would during the day. All of that will just have to be another video. Filming eye makeup was daunting enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more from Take a Jill Pill, go ahead and subscribe. It's a good time. I talk about cleaning, organizing, chocolate. There's a lot of chocolate on this channel but I'm okay with that. If you think that's something you'd be interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Until next time.
take it easy.